Hey there, Mr. Reddit here. Welcome back to another episode of r slash Entitled Parent Stories. Today we have a very special episode for you, a compilation of some of the greatest Entitled Parent Stories we read over the past year. So sit back, relax, and enjoy a few hours of the most Entitled Parents you've ever heard of. And by the way, Karen assured me that if this video gets 1000 likes, she won't try to speak to anyone's manager for an entire week. So please smash that like button. And if you're new, subscribe and turn on notifications for new stories from Reddit every single day. And become an official member of the ReArmy today, and I'll give you a shout out in an upcoming video. R slash Entitled Parents. Karen demands I play a more appropriate game so her son can watch. Threatens to have her husband arrest me when I resist. Here's some background info. I go to university in Florida, but my family lives in New Jersey and I fly back and forth between the two a lot. So it was only inevitable that I run into an entitled mom on a plane at some point. One more quick bit about me before we actually get into the story. I'm 21 years old, but when I'm clean shaven, which is really rare, I look significantly younger. And it just so happens that I felt like shaving a few hours before my flight. This sounds like an obscure detail, but trust me, it comes into play later when Karen mistakes me for a teenager. Cast. We've got me. We've got Karen. The flight attendant. The random passenger on the other side of the aisle. The army dude. This happened in the first week of May when my spring semester ended. I never pay the extra money to choose my own seat, so this always results in me getting one assigned to me. I was flying with Spirit. I usually fly with them or Frontier, and this is how seating works for them. So most of the time I end up in a middle seat since all the people who choose their own seats would obviously never pick that. However, I was lucky enough to score a window seat this time. This is an extremely popular opinion, but the window seat is my favorite plane seat. Enter Karen and her son. Karen looks exactly how you would expect and her son is most likely no older than 8 years old. Neither of them made any effort to greet me or introduce themselves, which I didn't mind one bit since I didn't try to talk to them either. I was already playing the Binding of Isaac on my Nintendo Switch with earbuds plugged in, which clearly signaled that I wasn't in the mood to socialize. My flight was pretty early in the morning and I was really tired. Karen sat in the aisle seat and her son sat in the middle between us. Now for those of you who have never heard of the Binding of Isaac, it's rated M, but the graphics are very cartoony and mild. It shouldn't even be rated M if you ask me. Although I have had people disagree with me on this, maybe I just have a really good tolerance. But not if you ask Karen. Because about a half hour into the flight, I feel a tap on my left shoulder. I was sitting on the right side of the plane. I took my left earbud out and turned to Karen. And that's when this conversation started. Yeah? What's going on? Me? Would you mind playing a different game? Why? My son is watching you play that game, and it's creeping him out. It isn't appropriate for him. It's the only game I have, so there isn't really anything I can do about that. Of course, this was a cold-faced lie. Ask anyone I've ever talked to. If I have one defining characteristic, it's my active and enthusiastic hobby of game collecting. But Karen didn't need to know that. I just didn't see the reason to let the way I entertain myself be dictated by an 8 year old, especially one that I've never met and never will meet again. Sure there is. You can stop playing. And sit here for 2 hours staring out the window with no other way to entertain myself? If it's all the same to you, I'd rather not. At this point, Karen is starting to raise her voice. Well, it's not the same to me. You need to learn to be aware of children around you. Now, a bit more background information about myself. I spent a lot of my time growing up around my little brother and a lot of other kids in my family who were considerably younger than me. And every time I wanted to do something I enjoyed, my parents would always make me dumb it down somehow because I needed to include the other kids. So, long story short, I've really grown to resent commands like this and hearing one from a stranger caused me to grow especially hostile. Oh yeah, and I hate kids. 
No, I don't. Your son needs to learn that the world doesn't revolve around him and not poke his nose around where it doesn't belong. In hindsight, I was a pretty big jerk, but I don't exactly have the greatest social skills in the world. Also, Karen was a jerk first and a much bigger one, as you'll see later on in the story, so I like to think I was justified. How dare you talk back to an adult that way? I give my peers the same amount of respect that they give me. I've done nothing but sit here and mind my own business, and I would appreciate the same courtesy. I'm not one of your stupid peers. I'm not a teenager. Those statements contradict each other. I'm an adult too. No, you're not. Are you trying to argue with me over my own age? Then prove it to me. Of course, my first idea was to just say no and try to drop this foolish conversation. But then I realized that she would probably keep bugging me if I did, and my best chance at ending this was proving her wrong. So I took out my driver's license. I began to reach over to hand it to her, but I was barely halfway through the motion before she impatiently snatched it from my hand. This is fake. My husband is a cop. I'm having you arrested when he picks us up at the airport. Well, it's real, so have fun wasting both of our family's time. Now, in Karen's defense, I was named after my dad, who was named after his dad, who was named after his dad. So my name does sound like that of an older person and is very rare in my generation. So I guess it's somewhat plausible for her to think that I got a fake ID with an older person's information on it. No, it's not. I bet you use this to get into bars, just like everyone else your age. Well, yes, I do use my ID to get into bars, and so do most other 21-year-olds, so that makes perfect sense to me. Shut up, you criminal! I'm not giving it back. That's some intense language. You need to learn to be aware of the children around you. Karen was clearly furious, but didn't even want to entertain me with a response, so I didn't say anything else either. At this point, she was quite literally stealing my ID, and I obviously had to do something about it, so I decided to wait for a flight attendant to come by so I could tell her what was going on. In the meantime, I decided to continue playing The Binding of Isaac, knowing full well that this would upset Karen, since it was the original root of the situation, and it visibly did. However, Instead of saying something to me again, she decided to push the button that summons flight attendants. In hindsight, I should have done that when she stole my license, but I forgot that was an option at the time. I have my earbuds attached to the game as usual, but this time the volume is all the way down so I can eavesdrop while looking like I have no idea what's going on. Enter flight attendant. Excuse me? That kid in the window seat is disturbing my son. Please make him stop. Flight attendant looks at me skeptically. He doesn't look like he's disturbing anyone. Yes, he is. He's playing an inappropriate game and my son is watching. Make him stop. There isn't a policy against video games as long as they're in airplane mode. If your son doesn't like the game, he shouldn't be watching it. Karen is probably about to say something but now I decide to butt in. Does that mean that there isn't a policy that allows someone to steal my driver's license if I'm playing a game that she deems inappropriate? Um, no, there's nothing like that. Well, clearly she didn't get the memo. Flight attendant turns to Karen. Ma'am, did you steal his driver's license? What? No, how dare you accuse me of such a thing? Are you really gonna believe a stupid kid over me? I give flight attendant a smirk and she shoots me back an understanding smirk. At this point, she realizes that she'll need to appease Karen until the time is right. Okay, ma'am, give me a few minutes to speak to the captain. I'll see what I can do about your situation. Flight attendant walks away and comes back to our row a few minutes later. There's a seat available in first class or whatever spirit calls those seats. I'm usually not allowed to usher passengers there, but we can make an exception after what you've had to deal with. Oh, thank God. This rotten teenager has been ruining my flight. I wasn't talking to you, ma'am. Looks over at me. Sir, would you like to move up to first class with no extra charge? 
I flash a grin at Karen, then look over to flight attendant and subtly shrug as I say, Well, if you insist, how can I say no? Great, and also, ma'am, it would probably be in your best interest to give him back his driver's license. He's lying. Why would I want a teenager's ID? Enter random person who stands up and starts talking to flight attendant. Excuse me, ma'am. I've been listening to what's been going on. This woman demanded to see his ID and then loudly announced that she wasn't giving it back. He's lying! Turns to random person. Of course you would take his side, you jerk. Now shut up and mind your own business. Now, two other nearby passengers stand up and start to take my side and random person's side. And the best part? They're both ladies. Now Karen can't even play that card. If you stole his driver's license, please give it back before you create more problems for us and our passengers and get arrested for theft when we land in Atlantic City. You can't arrest me? My husband is a cop and he's waiting for me at the airport. Then can you imagine how upset he would be when the first thing he has to do when he sees you is arrest you? Now, please make everyone's lives easier and give the license back so that no other trouble has to start. Karen reluctantly gives me back my ID without even making eye contact. Flight attendant escorted me to my new seat, next to Army Dude. While I was on the way, she told me that I could probably press charges against Karen for attempted theft and disturbing the peace with the flight attendant and a handful of passengers as witnesses, but I just shrugged it off and decided it wasn't worth it. Sure, Karen is a horrible person, but I have nothing to gain from having her arrested and disturbing the lives of the witnesses to possibly have part in a court case. Anyway, I sit down next to Army Dude. He pretty much looks exactly how you would expect. In full uniform, buzz cut, the whole nine yards. Of course, as soon as I sit down, I shake his hand, thank him for his service, all that good stuff. I also apologize that I had to disrupt his privacy because of an entitled mom. Army Dude chuckles. Nah, man, don't worry about it. Army Dude was actually very interested in hearing about what had happened with me and Karen, so I told him pretty much everything I've written above, and he got an absolute kick out of it. Turns out, he had also been a pretty big gamer before going into the military, so we had quite a bit to talk about in the remaining hour and 45 minutes of the flight. That's pretty much the story. The rest of the flight was pretty enjoyable. Kind of an anticlimactic ending, but oh well. I still don't regret not appeasing that brat. Next we've got a school term with an entitled teacher and his little brat. Good day, Mr. Reddit and the re-army. I always thought I was lucky that I haven't dealt with entitled parents. Then, after hearing a story about an entitled teacher, this story hit me, and boy was I wrong. So, some backstory. I moved a lot when I was a kid and have been to five different schools. My mom likes moving. This little story happened during school number two. It was a school in the middle of the country that was, I guess, a church before made into a school. I was at that time about seven to eight years old. Because the school had low numbers of kids, it never had a permanent teacher there. Teachers would come and go with each term, sometimes shorter. That's when entitled teacher came in. Now for this story, let's just call him Mr. E and his son, Little Brat for short. Little Brat and I never liked each other. For one, Brat was, to what I remember, smug, arrogant, and beyond full of himself. Had the talk and never had the walk. He would boast how he was good at something and I would burst his bubble in one form or another. Which leads to the second part, Mr. E. Brat would whine to his dad, and his dad would punish me and award his son, which led me to get upset and put more effort into embarrassing his son by defeating him in games or competitions, which leads Brat to whine to his dad, and, well, you get the idea. Now, the story. The cast should be obvious. Mr. E had announced that he was starting up a coloring-in competition, and the winner would get a prize. I, who loves drawing, still do, jumped at this. We had a choice of five different pictures, all of which from Disney movies. I found mine, a picture of Aladdin fighting Jafar as a giant cobra. I knew this movie back to front, and I knew this scene. 
I knew the colors I needed. I knew every shade. I smiled and took my piece. That week, I went to work on it, using my textures, color markers for anyone outside of Australia. I stayed in the lines, used the proper shades. I put my all into it. By the time I was done, it was a near split image of the movie. The day of the competition came and I hand mine in. All the pictures were presented as us kids had looked how the others did. Some were pretty good for kids. One of which was done by a girl in my year. The same picture as mine just was done in pencil. Some of the colors were out of the lines, but if there was a second place winner, then she would have won it for sure. I told her I liked hers and did the same. Then I saw little Brad's picture. How can I describe it? Imagine a kid with a five minute attention span, serious color blindness, and did it during an earthquake. That was his piece. I knew there was no way he could have won. If only I remembered who the judge was. We all sit back down and Mr. E begins to talk. Thanks to all of our young artists out there. Many of you are quite talented, but only one can win. I was still smiling as I heard many of the other kids compliment my piece. So, the winner of the competition is... Little Brat! Stunned in silence, my mouth dropped as Little Brat jumps, cheering and celebrating that he won. Yay! I won! I won! Yes, you did, Little Brat! Thanks to all who entered. I was so confused. Mine, or at least the girl prior, should have won. I stand up and walk up to Mr. E. Um, Mr. E? Mr. E turns, glaring at me. What is it? I was just curious. How is it mine didn't win? I will never forget his answer. Oh, that's because you used texters, and this was a competition for pencils only. I was dumbfounded and returned to my seat. I still remember that I went over in my head what he said about the competition, and not once did he say it was pencil only. No doubt, some BS rule that he just made up so his son could win. Later that day, Little Brat was bragging to the other kids how he won, how he beat everyone. Then he sees me. Ha! Oh, P, see this? Still flaunting his work around like he won the lottery. I won, and you lost. You didn't win. Your dad handed you that. You're just jealous that yours didn't get picked. Yours got picked because your dad is the teacher. Several O's can be heard from the other kids, smiles on their faces. Even they knew I was right, and little brat ran off back to his dad. I got extra homework for Mr. E that day, no doubt for upsetting his baby. Little Brad and I continued our back and forth after that. Small things like how Little Brad bragged he was the fastest in school. We all race. I win only to get disqualified due to cheating in a leg race. Figure that one out, Reddit. And his son gets rewarded. The cycle continued until eventually the next term, Mr. E and Little Brad weren't there and the school closed shortly after for having low numbers. I never saw a little brat and Mr. E after that and don't know what happened to them. I hope little brat grew out of it and is now a decent man. For his dad, Mr. E, if you're reading this, take a long walk off a short pier. Oh, and Mr. Reddit, if you want to use this in your video, you have my full permission. <sighs> Next we've got, even Santa is only human. Hi, Mr. Reddit. We all know that entitled parents just don't get it. In my 10 years as the man in the red suit, I meet a lot of families. Some I remember more than others. Reading your post reminded me of one story which happened circa 2015. This is my first post on this subreddit. Australian. English is my first language. On laptop. On dancer. On prancer. My spacebar will misfire occasionally but I'll correct where I can. In Australia, Christmas happens in summer. Now, because we are part of the British Commonwealth, we historically celebrate Christmas like Europeans, which means fake snow and 30 degrees Celsius heat and setting puddings on fire. Who doesn't love that? 
It also means that every Karen takes their spawn for their annual pilgrimage to be traumatized by the man in the red suit. Please don't get me wrong, I really like being a mall Santa and I'm something of a method actor. I do my research on Santa's history and I even give him what I think is a regionally appropriate accent. Anyway, I'm rambling. Our story takes place in the Santa enclosure of an anonymous retail outlet. Being summer in Australia and spending six to eight hours in a padded suit with no brakes can test one's endurance. This year was a challenge as during my quiet periods, my land whale of a photographer on the shift would sit directly in the flow of my air conditioner, complain she was cold, turn off the fan, and forget to turn it back on when it was time to take a photo. The store may have been air conditioned, but I certainly wasn't. Thank God for my elves. Our cast. We've got me, friendly neighborhood Santa man. We've got Jan. If Karen had a sister just as evil as her, it would be Jan. Not her real name. We've got Elf, the best elf ever. We've got Spawn 1, who's about 5. Spawn 2, who's about 4. And the Hatchling, who's a spawn who's about 3 and the store manager. Just like the internal instinct that American fathers have when someone has touched a thermostat, Karens and Jans worldwide have a powerful urge to get their kids to have a photo with Santa at the last possible minute. Six weeks before Christmas wasn't enough? The line this day was long, and we never would have gotten through it without Elf. Though young, she was very experienced and performed her duties perfectly. Now, laugh if you will, but elves perform a vital service to Santa photography. They're the middleman between the parents, photographers, and the Santa. They work hard when they know what they're doing and like their job. They earn their pay the hard way and almost never get the recognition they deserve. Enter Jan. Now, we have Karens in Australia, but as mentioned, I imagine Jan to be a sister of Karen, just as evil with a twist of being easily triggered, and a dash of we only eat organic food vibe. I had dealt with this Jan on the previous year and gave a secret signal to Elf to watch out for this one as we knew she was going to be a handful. Hi there, would- Is this the same Santa as last year? It's the same Santa as every year. Jan grumbles. Ugh. Jan then instructs the kids to sit on my knee each. Normally this wouldn't be an issue. But our safety policy instructs us to ask them if they would like to sit on Santa's knee or offer them alternatives. There were plenty of choices. In the end, it's their decision. The kids wanted to sit on the padded boxes near my chair, and I offered them a seat. No, I want them to sit on his knee. I want spawn one here and spawn two there. I'm sorry, ma'am. We can't force the kids to sit on Santa's knee if they don't want to. We can still get a great photo where they are. Meanwhile, I'm asking the kids what they want for Christmas and getting the usual I don't know answers. You two, get on his knees, now! I need to get Hatchling out of this stroller. The spawns know it's not worth arguing, and in true Santra tradition, I help them up to a lap each. They're not used to sitting like this and are having trouble keeping their balance. I steady them where I can, and then Jan brings out the Hatchling. One and a half, maybe two years old. Jan decides that the best place to put Hatchling is right in the middle. A huge no in our industry. I say in character. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't let little Hatchling sit there. Why not? It wouldn't look appropriate. And it looks like I need both hands to steady your sons. They're obviously not comfortable where they are. Maybe they can sit on the arms of the chair, and I'll have both hands free to hold Hatchling. No, I want to put Hatchling there so my children are even. And would you stop using that ridiculous voice? They know Santa isn't real. Me still in character. Then you're just holding up the line. Why did you even come for a photo with me? Jan shoots me a look that could redefine the triggered meme. And with the length of the line, Elf stepped in to hurry things along. They look like big, strong boys. They can keep their balance for a good photo while Santa holds Hatchling. Not wanting to deal with this anymore, 
Jan passes Hatchling to me, and I cradle him high enough for the camera to see. Hatchling has now realized who he has been passed to. The fear sets in hard, and Hatchling begins to bawl. Spawn 2 Mom, Hatchling is too close to me. I don't want him here. Hatchling, bawling is an understatement. No child in all my years as a Santa has ever had a pair of lungs that powerful. The screams filled the whole floor of the store. Spawn 1 I don't want to do this anymore. Jan Sit down, bloody smile. I'm going to get a photo this year. Spawn 1 I don't wanna. <coughs> Leg flailing mill down. Spawn 2 Ah! Spawn 1 is kicking me. <coughs> Cue second mill down. The screams were enough to get the store manager out of her office. While I did put her in the cast, I can't remember what she said over the three screaming banshees I'm balancing. Believe it or not, I'm actually finding this funny. So are some of the parents in the line. Elf tried her best to get the kids' attention, but the noise was so overwhelming, they just weren't listening. They wanted out. Now. In the end, the screaming was too much. Jan gave in and the photographer took the screaming photo. I did see it floating around on the Today Show Australia's Facebook page, but haven't been able to find it since. Jan collected her brood and Hatchling's bawling stopped the moment Jan picked him up. They slunked off back into the abyss that belched them. From there, the rest of the day was a breeze with the occasional crier, but nothing I couldn't handle. Next we've got Entitled Mom Gets Mad because my girlfriend is asleep on a four-hour flight and then asks for an upgraded seat. Me and my girlfriend are 17 and decided it would be nice to go on holiday for a week during the school summer holiday. We spoke to both our parents and they said it was fine and my girlfriend's mom even said they would help us pay for it. So, you know I'm on mobile. The cast. We've got me. My girlfriend. Entitled mom. Entitled kid the flight attendant, and the flight attendant's manager. The story. Me and girlfriend booked a holiday in Cyprus, which included our flight and an all-exclusive holiday village apartment. We had a late-night flight, so we got to the airport for about 7 p.m. to allow us time to have some dinner before our flight. When we got on the plane, we found our seats, and I put our bags in the storage area above us. Since it was a very late flight, Girlfriend was very tired, and I could see this, but I just thought no biggie. She can fall asleep on me if she wants. When I saw who was behind us, I just knew this was an entitled mom. We took off with no problem, surprisingly seeing as we had very good seats. We were about two hours in the flight, and girlfriend is lying on my shoulder while we watch some Netflix with my earphones in. One earphone for girlfriend and one for me. I looked down to look at girlfriend and realized she was asleep. But like I said earlier, who cares? Turns out, Entitled Mom does care. From behind me, I hear Entitled Mom clear her throat and then, Excuse me? I turn around and this is how the conversation went. What? Why is she asleep? Because she's tired? Kind of sarcastically. Well... Why does she have to fall asleep? It's only a four-hour flight. Because she was tired? I don't mind, and she knows that. And can you please lower your voice? She's trying to sleep. Entitled mom starts shouting. Don't tell me to lower my voice, young man. Girlfriend wakes up and says to me, Hey babe, what's going on? This jerk has a problem with you sleeping. Why? I don't know. Girlfriend then takes her hoodie off because it's very hot on the plane. She's now wearing her vest, which covers up everything, but you can see her strap just a little. OMG! You're such a nasty. Why would you wear something like that in a public place? I hate it when people call my girlfriend names. Don't you call her a name like that, you fat mouth jerk! Entitled mom then presses the assistance button and flight attendant comes over to see what the problem is. Before flight attendant can even ask what the problem is, Entitled Mom shouts at her, This nasty and her ugly boyfriend are harassing me and my son. Entitled Kid was asleep, but now is awake. Flight attendant's manager then comes from around the corner. 
We were at the front, near where the flight attendants go if they're not doing anything. So if someone was there, they would have heard everything. Flight attendant's manager says, That is not true. I have heard everything. Well, then you know that they were harassing us. No, they weren't. This young lady was asleep, and you started having a go at her boyfriend and then called her a nasty. Entitled mom, realizing she has lost. I don't want to sit near such a nasty. Flight attendant, go look in first class to see if there are two seats to share. After five or so minutes, flight attendant comes back saying that there is. An entitled mom gets up and begins to move. Where are you going? To first class. No, you said you didn't want to sit near them, so we are moving them to first class. Entitled mom is speechless. Me and girlfriend say thank you. I give girlfriend my hoodie and my phone so I can get our bags. But manager says they will bring ours over to us. Flight attendant took us over to first class where we were given free drinks and left in peace. Once we got off the plane, we went through security and out to our transfer bus. We sat at the back, an entitled mom then got on as well, but luckily she stayed quiet and sat at the front of the bus. Our hotel was the first stop, and guess what? Entitled mom and entitled kid were at the same hotel. But what I was not expecting is that there were people waiting for entitled mom, and all we hope is that they don't bother us. Thanks for reading. Sorry it was so long. I wanted to sell my old car, but Entitled Son wants my new car, so Entitled Dad and Entitled Son steal it. I deleted my second post because after reading through it again and talking to my mom about it, I misunderstood some information. But third time's a charm, and I'm still fuming about it. Backstory. I have to go back a bit for that. In April 2018, it was the last day we had freezing temperatures and heavy snow. On that day, on my way home from work, I had an accident with my 2006 Ford Focus. I crashed into a driver in front of me because I underestimated the frozen road. Don't worry, neither me nor the driver I crashed into were harmed in any way. His car had a scratch in the front bumper, while my car's front bumper broke at the side. Police were called, we exchanged information and that was the end of it. So I had to bring my car to the mechanic again and I had enough of it. I owned the car for almost two years and had to make several repairs already. So I thought whatever and tried to get a new car. I brought my focus to a friend of mine who made a little extra by repairing cars. A coworker of mine gave me a ride to work until I had a new car. I paid my share for the gas. Now to the present. Around a month ago, I found a new car, finally. A car dealer had a deal where they would sell cars with daily admission for 10,000 euro less than the original price. After a short time thinking and some dealing with my bank account manager, I'm now the owner of a 2018 Ford Focus ST Line Sport Edition, completely black except for the roof and the top half of the side mirrors which were red. The car is great, and when I bought it, they only had around 15 miles. Sorry for the long backstory. On to the actual encounter. After I bought the new car, I put my old Focus up for sale on an app called Auto Scout 24, where everyone can sell their cars for how much they want for it. Of course, depending on age, miles, etc. Most of the damages were fixed. Me and my significant other cleaned it inside and out but I knew I wouldn't get much for it. So I put the base price at 350 euro with the option to bargain. In my first post, I told you that I live in the old town of my home city. So in order to not occupy parking spaces and to avoid parking tickets, I parked my car at my grandma's place in her driveway. Her house is on the countryside, so it won't bother anyone and I could take good pictures for the ad. Two days ago, while I was at work, I got a call from an unknown number. The guy left a message that he wanted to take a look at the car. I called him back, told him where the car was and that we could meet there after my shift was finished. He agreed. After I'm done with my shift, I drove immediately to my grandma's place to wait for him. Cast. We've got Entitled Dad, Entitled Son, around 17 to 18, and me, Master of Disaster. 
and Grandma. Me and Entitled Dad agreed on meeting at 15.30. I was there early, parked next to my old Focus, went inside to tell my grandma I was selling the car today and checked if everything was still alright. Entitled Dad and Entitled Son arrive half an hour later than agreed, explaining the place was hard to find. I shrug it off because I could tell they weren't from around here. So, me and Entitled Dad take a look around the car. I explain everything to him, fix damages, etc. He asks me about how many miles, etc., the usual stuff. When I talk with Entitled Dad, I notice that Entitled Son wasn't paying any attention. The car was supposed to be for Entitled Son, according to Entitled Dad. Entitled Son rather likes to take a look at my new Focus instead. Dang, that's a nice ride. Thanks. Can I take a ride? Now, I'm very picky if it's about my new car, but who wouldn't be? And by the way, I had a feeling he didn't have his driver's license for very long. Sorry, not happening. I just got the car a few weeks ago. Come on, let the boy have a little fun. Sorry, still not happening. And by the way, we were talking about my 2006 Focus, not my new one. But I like this car. You heard him, he likes the new one. So how about you sell us this one instead? Yeah, right. And how much would you pay me anyway? Well, the ad said 350 euros. Yes, for the 2006 Ford Focus. Fine, I'll give you 3,000 for the new one. Are you serious? I paid 30,000 for that car. 30,000 was the original price, but with the deal, I got it for 20,000. Well, you drove the car for a while, and that's a price drop. Sorry, this is leading nowhere. We are done. I turned to my car, pulled the key out of my pockets, and just wanted to go home. Dad, I said I want the car. Entitled Dad grabs me by the arm. You heard him. Hand over the keys. Now, I'm a little heavy build, but I'm still strong enough to fight if I have to. I said no, and I would recommend you let me go now. While my eyes were staring at Entitled Dad, Entitled Son snatched the keys from my hand, unlocked the car, and jumped in. I immediately freed myself from Entitled Dad and ran to the driver's side of my car. That little jerk locked the door so I couldn't get inside. So I did the only thing I could and stood behind my car to prevent him from leaving. He could only back out of the driveway. Tell your kid to get out of the car before I call the police. In the commotion, my grandma came outside. What's going on? Grandma, go inside and call the police. They're trying to steal my... I couldn't finish because Entitled Dad shoved me aside so Entitled Son could drive away. Well, he surprised me. I hit the ground hard and they drove off in my car while leaving their car behind. I immediately grabbed my phone and called the police. As I mentioned in the backstory, my new focus was completely black except for the roof and the top of the side mirrors which were red, which means that car stood out among the most which are around in our home city. It took the police 10 minutes to arrive. One of the officers took my and my grandma's statement while the other one radioed his colleagues from the neighboring towns the description and license plate of my car. About an hour later, Entitled Dad and Entitled Son came back to the house with my car. The two policemen pulled them out of the car and cuffed them. Entitled Dad tried to talk him and his son out of the situation by telling the police they only did a test drive. The police had none of their BS and escorted them away. They asked me if I wanted to press charges and I agreed. More importantly, I checked my car for damages. It had around 20 miles more than before and I found ash and cigarette burns in my back seat. I still have to wait for a court date and if possible, I'll keep you updated. P.S. Their car was later picked up by the wife of Entitled Dad who told me she is sorry for their behavior. Little update. I have an appointment with my lawyer this Thursday. I'll keep you updated. Next we've got Entitled Mom Wants to Skip the Line but Gets a Lot More Than She Wanted. Edit. Conversion for temperature, 35 degrees Celsius is 95 degrees Fahrenheit. 
Long time lurker, first time post. A few need to know details. It was very hot. It was about 35 degrees Celsius, but it felt like 44. Important detail for later. So I was standing in line at the checkout at my local supermarket. I think in total I had about 10 items. Some frozen goods, drinks, and snacks. I usually tend to take out one of the buds of my phone, so in case someone addresses me, I would hear it. At this time, the woman at the cash register was taking care of the payment of one client, and there was one person in front of me. And then suddenly, she appeared. The entitled mom in this story. Now honestly, she didn't look it. She didn't even give off a mean vibe or anything. Even the way she started talking to me was overall nice and polite. At first. Excuse me, do you mind if I skip ahead? I'm in a hurry. Now, in general, if somebody politely asks me this, and I don't have any urgent business of my own, I usually don't mind. This time, however, I didn't have that many groceries, so her delay would be at most a few minutes. While she was pushing a fully loaded shopping cart in front of her. So if I would have let her skip, I'd probably still be in the store for another 10 to 20 minutes. So I politely decline and tell her I will hurry as much as I can. Of course, this was a great offense. I had not given this woman her entitlement. She blew up instantly, yelling and screaming at me that she was in a hurry and, not getting here, had to be home in time for her shows. Now at this time, I would like to point out that during this rant, she only said she had to be home in time for shows and that were very important to her. There was nothing else making this urgent for her. This is important a bit later. Now, while this woman was going off, the person at the cash register went into ignore mode and just started scanning my groceries, which I loaded into bags while the entitled mom was going on about how I was garbage and they should have me banned from the store. Now, this should have been the end of it. Just turn around and go home and forget this happened. But then she said something that, one, made me almost want to off her, and two, made this a postable story. While I was walking away, just about to put the earplug back in, she yells, If you pass by my car, tell my son you're the reason he has to wait another half an hour for me. Now, I'm not an extremely smart person, but in this moment, my brain made some connections quickly. What I realized was that, one, again, it was very hot outside. Two, this woman had been in the store for a while, judging by the amount of groceries. And three, the entire parking lot of this store had almost no shade. Four, it was about 2 p.m., so the sun was just over its peak. I rush outside and start running past cars, scanning them for kids inside. Thankfully, one of the first cars I pass has a small kid laying in the back seat. This kid is as pale as a ghost, sweating like crazy, and it looked like he was only half conscious. I run back inside, and to my utter astonishment, this jerk is having a conversation with the cashier while she's checking her out for groceries. I grab her by the shoulders, spin her around, and yell almost straight to her face, that her kid is literally burning up in the car, and if you don't do something right now, I'm smashing in your windows and calling the cops. At first, she looked at me in complete confusion, probably never been spoken to like that before in her life. Then the realization of what I told her sunk in, and she rushed outside. While she went outside, a man tapped me on the shoulder and asked what had happened. I explained the situation, actually leaving out the bit at the cash register, just saying I saw the kid in the car and knew that this woman was probably the owner. He went outside, and when I came outside, the entitled mom suddenly rushed me and got in my face, saying I was the reason she was in there for so long, and her son's current condition was my fault. Before I can even respond, the man that approached me earlier speaks up. Turns out, this man was an off-duty cop, and had been in the store for a while and as such knew the actual delay caused by me could not have caused this. He also said that he had already called an ambulance for the kid and the cops for her. I don't know what happened to the entitled mom, but she completely crashed. 
She just sat down on the pavement and started shaking her head, not saying much except the occasional sob or, Not my fault. As for the ending, everything turned out okay for most parties. I stayed a while to give a statement to the cops and my contact info in case it went to court. The kid was okay afterwards, and since his mom got arrested, they called his dad or another male family member, I didn't ask, to accompany him to the hospital. As for the entitled mom, I'm assuming she's going to have to stand trial. Not sure if she'll get just a fine or jail time. Next we've got, Entitled mom tries to make youngest daughter take care of older daughter's horse at a horse show. Gets yelled at by a former professional rider. Alright, so this is probably the most memorable entitled parent experience I've had. Save from tales I can tell about my mom which aren't exactly very many that stand out and are rather just kind of something she does in general. Anyway, I grew up riding and showing horses, which meant I went to a lot of horse shows, which also means a lot of entitlement, but there wasn't anything that really stuck out like this one. Typically, it was just parents arguing with a judge, trying to convince them to change their decision and make the winner give up their ribbon to their kid, so I didn't pay attention since it didn't involve me. This story, however, is completely different and kind of personal. It's also really infuriating, which is probably why I remember it so well. I'm on mobile, so forgive any spelling and grammar mistakes. Also, I was 8 when this happened, so I don't remember the exact dialogue. Cast. We've got me. Girl with no patience for stupidity or entitlement. We've got entitled mom. Karen, who does not understand how professional writing works, nor the bond between horse and rider needed. We've got entitled daughter, who wants to be a professional horse rider and thinks others should do things for her. And we have sweet girl, who deserves to be treated better than she was. And mom, my mom, who is a former professional writer. So, for context, I always sang the national anthem at the beginning of the shows, and also helped at the tack shop in between classes, so I tended to talk to the people showing a lot, as they tended to find out they forgot something or it broke. As I was a kid at the time of this story, I just handed them their items and wiped down the table. I met a girl my age one day, when she needed to get something or other for her sister. Things were slow, so I got to hang out with her, which I probably could have done regardless since I was a little kid. We went over to where her trailer was, and as we both had Nintendo DS's, we started playing against each other. Cue Entitled Mom and Entitled Daughter. Entitled Mom, yelling and red-faced. Sweet girl, what are you doing? Your sister's in the next class, and her horse isn't brushed or tacked up. Nor does it have food or water. For those who don't know, the saddle, bridle, and saddle blanket are called tack, and when someone says a horse is or isn't tacked up, it means that the horse either does or doesn't have the bridle, saddle, and saddle pad on. But it's entitled daughter's horse. That doesn't matter. You're supposed to take care of it. She's going to be a professional. She shouldn't have to get her hands dirty. Now, I may have been eight, but even I brushed my own horse and fed her. My mom tacked up the horse because I couldn't reach, and didn't have much upper arm strength, which made picking up my heavy western saddle hard to do. Sweet girl wouldn't have had trouble picking up her sister's saddle, since it's a light English one. There's two types of riding styles. My mom also got water for the horse because of the lack of my upper arm strength, but otherwise, I did everything myself. It's what's expected of riders, as the horse and rider are a team, and without having a strong, special bond with one another, they don't work well, and it makes showing and riding more difficult. As Entitled Mom was yelling at Sweet Girl, Entitled Daughter snatched the DS and also tried to take mine, which as I was already incredibly mad that my friend was being forced to take care of her sister's horse, but that was the final straw, as I had just gotten the DS for Christmas. Sweet Girl shouldn't have to take care of Entitled Daughter's horse. It's Entitled Daughter's. She should take care of it. Leave sweet girl alone, and don't touch my DS. That did not fare well with entitled mom. She grabbed me by my hair and drug me to my mom's trailer. 
Your brat here just started yelling at me because I told Sweet Girl to take care of Entitled Daughter's horse. Entitled Daughter shouldn't have to take care of her horse. She's going to be a professional one day, and they don't do that. They have others do it for them. You should teach her to mind her own business and not lecture adults on their parenting. My mom turned red, and fun fact, my mom used to be a professional writer. She even almost made it to the Olympics, but found out she was pregnant with me and quit, which also gave a friend of hers her spot in the Olympics. My mom knew what it was like to be a professional writer and what they did, which was take care of and tack up their own horses. She also used to help teach and train riders and had always emphasized the bond between horse and rider. Well, sweet girl shouldn't be tacking up entitled daughter's horse, especially if she wants to be a professional. You need a strong bond between horse and rider if you want to make it there, and you also need to take care of your own horse. I know, I used to be a professional. Entitled mom left, and mom took me back home because she was extremely mad. I wish I could say that after being told by a professional to take care of her own horse, she did, but unfortunately, Sweet Girl was still forced to take care of her sister's horse for as long as I continued showing. I don't know what happened to her after I stopped, but I hope she's doing better. I also feel really bad for Entitled Daughter, because she'll never know the joy that comes from spending time with your horse. Oh well, her loss in more ways than one. And our final story of the day. Let my kids play with your bike. Hi, Mr. Reddit. First time posting, long time viewer. I love your videos and hope to see some of my stories on your channel. I wasn't sure where to put this story. I was going to post it in Entitled Parents, but it didn't work. Not sure why. Obligatory mobile and grammar warnings. English is my first language, but as you'll see, I'm bad at it. I won't be putting in any dialogue because this is my husband's story and I wasn't there. Our cast, we've got my husband and we've got the good for nothing cop and entitled mom. Husband rides his bike to work because we currently do not have a car. On this particular day, he had just locked it up and was about to head inside to clock in when three kids started messing with his bike. He noticed who he assumed was their mother who was paying very little attention to them, and asked her to tell her kids to stop. Entitled mom told him that he can't tell her kids what to do and that they could do whatever they want. While this was happening, another parent passed by with his son, who was younger than Entitled mom's kids, and he wanted to touch the bike too. But his father told him not to. Kudos to that dad for actually teaching his child not to touch other people's property without permission. Now, Husband is a bit of a hothead and really doesn't like when people touch his things. He told Entitled Mom that he wasn't, but she should teach her kids to be more careful because other people could have weapons, might hurt them for touching their things. Entitled Mom took that as a threat and said she'd call the police, but finally got her kids away from Husband's bike. Husband told her to go right ahead, thinking she wouldn't actually do it, and if she did that the police would be on his side. Unfortunately, he was wrong. Entitled mom did call the police and was able to tell her side first, probably telling the good-for-nothing cop that husband had threatened to hurt them. When husband told his side of the story, good-for-nothing cop asked him if he knew that Entitled mom's kids were autistic. Don't beat me up for this. I have many family members on the autism spectrum, but neither of us think that's the truth and that it's just something Entitled mom used to keep the cop on her side. Husband said Entitled Mom didn't tell him that, but it shouldn't matter and he had every right to protect his property. Good for nothing cop asked him if the kids had damaged the bike in any way. Husband said no. Cop asks if they were trying to steal it. When again husband said no, cop told him that when kids see a bike, they see it as a toy and he had no right to say anything at all. Husband told the cop that not only was it his only way to work, but he had had issues with people messing with the gears and tires before, and because of it, has almost crashed because something he didn't notice until it was almost too late. Thankfully, he hasn't been in any very serious accidents. Cop said that this didn't matter, 
and husband should keep his threats to himself. Thankfully, husband didn't get arrested, but I guess it was a win for the entitled mom anyway. Also, husband wasn't threatening them and is trying to be more careful with what he says to people. Unfortunately, some people will just have to learn the hard way. Entitled Mom Stealing a Child's Starbucks A little background. I have a 12-year-old little sister with Down syndrome and autism. My mom and I took her to the doctors, and for a reward, we took her to Starbucks after, since she loves Starbucks. Our cast. We've got Entitled Mother, Entitled Kid, about 6 or 7 years old, my little sister, and the barista. So, me and little sister got into Starbucks after the appointment while my mom stays in the car. She recently had a back surgery, so we don't want her moving too much unnecessarily. We got inside and I order a drink for me, my mom, my daughter at home, and for my sister. Now, my sister was already pretty upset and stressed out since she had a rather painful appointment with way too many shots for her liking, but she desperately wanted this Starbucks. I go up to order, and behind me is Entitled Mom and Entitled Kid. I pay, and we go to sit down at one of the tables to wait for our drinks. But my sister wasn't having it, and was running around crazy. The sweet barista then asks if she wants to watch her make the drink. So I walk over with her, to the part of the counter where you could see what is happening. Little sister is amazed, and loved watching the barista mix the drink and put all of the stuff in it. By now, Entitled Mom and Entitled Kid had finished ordering. Entitled Mom went to sit down, and Entitled Kid wandered over to us to watch as well. I didn't have a problem with this, and both the girls were having fun watching. Little Sister got whipped cream on her drink, and the barista let her put her own sprinkles on it. Now, here is where the drama starts. Right when Entitled Kid sees that Little Sister is putting her own sprinkles on her drink, she starts begging to put some sprinkles on herself. Here is the conversation that follows. I want to put some sprinkles on it too. Well, sweetie, this is actually little sister's drink, but you can put some sprinkles on when your drink is ready. But no, I want to put sprinkles on this one. At this point, Entitled Mom comes over. What's the problem here? Well, your daughter wanted to put some sprinkles on this other little girl's drink, but I told her no since it doesn't belong to her. Well, why can't my daughter put some on it too? You let this other girl... Like I said before, this drink isn't hers, and I did mention that she could put sprinkles on her own. Mommy, I want to, please. Well, we're not putting sprinkles on a pink drink, so just give her the darn sprinkles. At this point... Little sister is getting overstimulated from all the yelling, so I try taking her away. But she is so determined to get this drink that she won't leave. The barista slides the drink over to me and little sister. But right before we can take it, Entitled Mom comes over and grabs it and gives it to Entitled Kid. Me and barista both start telling her that the drink is little sister's, but she just ignores us and gives it to Entitled Kid. Little sister starts screaming and trying to grab it from Entitled Kid. Entitled Kid gets scared and runs behind Entitled Mom. And while I'm trying to control Little Sister, Entitled Kid takes a sip of the drink and spits it out onto the floor. Mommy, I don't like this. It tastes like throw up. Excuse me? This isn't the drink we want. Entitled Kid obviously doesn't like it. I want a refund. Both me and Barista are completely shocked, and Barista starts trying to reason with Entitled Mom. I didn't completely hear everything that happened since Little Sister started having a panic attack. Once again, I tried leaving with her, but this girl would not leave without her drink. Eventually, Entitled Mom and Entitled Kid leave and throw the drink in the trash. What they say next, though, made me so angry, I was speechless. The barista told them they needed to pay for the drink, and as Entitled Mom is walking through the door, she says, Tell that little, insert slur toward people with mental disabilities, to pay for it. At this point, I'm fuming, and I wanted to run after her and give her a piece of my mind. But instead, I was frozen in shock that someone would use that word to a child. Anyways, 
The barista apologized and let little sister help make another drink on the house and even threw in a cake pop. Next we've got Entitled Dad Makes My Life Heck and then wants me to move in with his family to be a live-in babysitter. Here's the kicker, I wouldn't get any money. Hi Mr. Reddit, me and my husband love the stories. Long time lurker, first time poster. I'm in the UK, but formatting may be bad as I'm on mobile, but I will try my best. English is my first language, so correct any mistakes in the comments. Our wonderful cast. We've got me, Majestic Eagle. We've got Boyfriend, we've got Entitled Dad, his wife, kids 1, 2, and 3, aged at the time 3, 5, and 7. The 5-year-old was disabled, but his mom and dad saw to him. Me and hubby were talking about Entitled Parent stories we have heard and we remembered this little treasure. So a few years ago, I owned a babysitting business. It was pretty small, but it paid the bills and was very popular with the families and I charged very competitive rates. We're talking below minimum wage for the nights. Story time. So, this family consisted of entitled dad, wife, and their three boys. Sometimes it was 2 to 3 a.m. before they were home. I was hired under the pretense that it was only going to be about four or five hours, give the kids their dinner, bathe the oldest to youngest, get them all ready for bed, then chill until the parents came home. No problem, right? Boy, was I wrong. A few weeks into looking after the family, I was given basic training, how to give the five-year-old his medication, sort his tubes out, and give him special nutrients fed through a tube in his stomach. I got a hold of it pretty quickly, and the parents were happy, so I was happy. For a while, anyway. After I had been trained and the kids had got to know me after six months, the parents left me overnight. It was all good, but then I get a phone call the next day. Hello? Hi, OP. Um, why is my laptop broken? Entitled Dad, I never touched your computer. I had my own. B.S. When I left, the computer was fine. You must have done something. Me getting anxious as I hate conflict. Sir, I never touched it to go on it. I moved it out of the way of the children. Fine. You're only getting half your wages for the overnight to pay for the damages. I told boyfriend and he went absolutely crazy, as he knew then and now I would never intentionally damage someone's property. I thought this was the end of that babysitting gig, but I get a phone call a week later. Hi, wife of Entitled Dad. Is everything okay? Um, yeah. I know Entitled Dad blew up at you last week for a mistake, but can you babysit tonight? Entitled Dad said you can have one final chance. Me, feeling a little weary. Yeah. Sure, just let me get sorted after rehearsal. I used to be a dancer. It was already 3 p.m., so we were finishing in an hour. Okay, do you need picking up? Nah, boyfriend is staying with me tonight. He will bring me down. Okay, no problem. See you at 6. So I finish rehearsal, go home and shower, and then boyfriend takes me to the house. I knock on the door, and kid one answers and gives me a hug. Hi, OP. I missed you. I patted him on the head and smiled at him. I walk into the living room, and there's only wife in there. Oh, hi OP. Entitled Dad has already gone to the pub, so it's just me and the boys. I released a breath I didn't realize I was holding, and nod in relief. You're okay doing kid number two's medical stuff, aren't you? Yes, just go and enjoy, I tell her sweetly, as I'm not a witch after all. She smiles and gives her boys hugs and goes out. A couple of hours go by, and I'm feeling a little anxious, so I text the wife. Hey, can boyfriend come down and keep me company? She replied, yes, no problem. So I invited boyfriend down from my house, and he came in. The boys were already asleep, so it was just me. We watched some crappy films, and a few hours later, Entitled Dad and his wife walk in. Entitled Dad went red when he saw boyfriend. How dare you have company in my house? Entitled Dad, I said she could invite him down. Her voice seemed to simmer the ravaged beast building inside of him. You should have messaged me for permission as well. His voice scarily calm. Last time I checked, we weren't speaking. I said, perfectly innocent, knowing he was in the wrong. 
Boyfriend says, I'm going to the car. Don't be long, okay? I nod because I am super tired after all day dancing and then babysitting. Give her the wages, Entitled Dad. She's done her job and not messed up. Entitled Dad reluctantly passed me my money. I go to the car and we go home. Entitled Dad glaring daggers at me while we pulled out. I'm almost in tears because I feel like we're not done and something is going to happen. Boyfriend says, It will be okay, love. Things will work out for the best. We go to bed and are happy. The next morning, I wake up to five missed calls from Entitled Dad. I text him, What do you want, Entitled Dad? You brought a man into my house without my expressed permission. Tell me why I should rehire you. I tell my boyfriend to call the police. By now, I'm done with this crap and don't care which way this goes. I tell Entitled Dad, I'm not bothered, Entitled Dad. I have other families that are more grateful than you are for a cheap babysitter. He calls again. This time I answer and put it on speaker. He's raging down the phone, making threats to the love of my life, and I snap. Listen, Entitled Dad. Say anything you want about me, but say anything about my boyfriend, then you've got a whole different world of heck coming your way. You know what? I quit, and I'm changing my number. You can't quit. You have a contract. Not a legal binding one. It was just a copy from Word. No lawyers or anything, so I can quit when I want. But I need you. No. Goodbye forever. I hope your kids and wife one day see you for the true jerk you are, just because your babysitter isn't free at your beck and call. Click. So a few weeks go by, and me and boyfriend are now engaged and are living happily together and not heard anything from Entitled Dad. Then I get a message on Facebook. I actually forgot to block the idiot. Hi, OP. Me, wife, and kids are moving to a new town and want you to become our living babysitter. I know I'm going to say no, but I'm going to humor him anyway. I tell him, Okay, I'm just going to write down some details. You don't need to. All your bills will be paid. But you will have to leave that boyfriend of yours and won't be getting any wages. I am stunned. This guy makes my life heck and then has the audacity to demand I leave my partner? Live with them in a town I don't know and not get paid? Haha, <laughs> funny. So, I'm not going to get paid. How do I get new clothes, toiletries, and have savings? And you're expecting me to live in a town I don't know? Yes, and we will pay for it all. Let me think about this. Absolutely not. I'm done with your antics. I'm done with you. Find a new babysitter. But I'm telling you now, you will find absolutely no one as cheap as me. And blocked. It's been six years now, and not heard anything from them. Me and boyfriend got married in 2016, and we celebrate our anniversary later this month, July. Just over a year after we married, we were blessed with our beautiful son in Christmas of 2017. Next we've got, Entitled Mom tells me to keep my opinion to myself and then tries to trip me. Hello Mr. Reddit and all-powerful re-army. I did post this story on the Entitled Parent subreddit, but I wanted to share it here as well. Feel free to use it or not. It's not that interesting. English is my only language, and spelling isn't what worries me about this or any post, really. I am very dyslexic, so how I phrase things can make reading my stories a little difficult. I have been bullied into removing posts before because of this problem. I work hard on making sure everything is as clear and concise as possible, but I'm only human. A little extra backstory about myself. I'm incredibly awkward and spent much of my youth completely socially isolated. So, I have a very strange personality and strange tendencies. I'm not autistic, but due to reasons that don't need to be recounted here, I have PTSD and PT-induced agoraphobia, social anxiety disorder, and an extreme social fear of being in trouble, especially while in public. These fears drive my strange personality, as well as a constant need to do what is right at all times. I can say this has made me a very unpopular person. The scene of the incident, Walmart, so classy I know. You have me, the strange one. 
There is Entitled Mom, the entitled bag of this story. Her hell spawn, who was maybe four years old, entitled kid, and the Walmart worker. My significant other and our daughter were also with me shopping, but we had separated at the point where the incident occurred and they did not witness what had happened. Lucky them. After spending about an hour shopping, we were about ready for checkout and decided to go over our list and what was in the cart. I noticed something was still in the cart that I didn't want and my significant other noticed some things that had been forgotten that were on the list he needed to get on the other side of the store. My significant other takes the cart and our daughter and goes one way and I go the other way to put the item I didn't want back. This is one of those things that I was explaining as being an often looked at strange behavior. If I choose to not buy something, I will put it back where it came from, whether or not it is a perishable. I was in the general area where I had gotten this item from, but couldn't recall exactly where. So I went looking for an employee who could assist me. I didn't want to leave it on a random shelf and risk getting yelled at or whatever scary stuff my mind was telling me was going to happen. I look down the next aisle and I see a path of destruction as the floor is covered with items that had been knocked off the shelves and an employee trying to politely explain to the entitled mom that her entitled kid can't be allowed to continue to knock down items from the shelves or she would be responsible for the cost of damages. From what I was able to gather from the situation, this wasn't the first time this employee had to deal with this entitled mom and she was at her breaking point with the whole thing. Of course, saying anything to an entitled mom can set them off like a gunpowder keg and this lady was just waiting for an excuse to explode and she did just that. She went into an outrage and she started screaming craziness at the Walmart worker. My son is a darling. He is a damaging a thing, stupid jerk, entitled mom screeched. The worst part was every time the mother yelled and cursed, the more her son acted out by throwing more items from the shelves onto the floor. The entitled mom actually stamped her feet like a raging bull when she was screaming as well. It was like a strange temper tantrum. At this point, I had enough, and I could see that Walmart worker herself was actually on the verge of tears. I'm not sure where I mustered up any kind of courage, but I managed to and confronted entitled mom myself. Listen here, lady. What gives you the right to talk to an employee like that? It is rude and uncalled for. Not to mention abusive. Can't you see what you are doing has an effect on your son? Or are you just that dense? I admit, I may have gone a bit too far with the last part of what I had said to her, but she really upset me. Then Entitled Mom said, Keep your opinion to yourself, you stupid girl. I seriously wanted to facepalm on that line. I don't look my age. I never have. I can guarantee that I was older than Entitled Mom, so I giggled a bit, and I'm sure that was a mistake. So while I was confronting Entitled Mom, the Walmart worker had started putting some of the items back on the shelves, and she had discreetly contacted security to monitor the situation in case things were to get out of hand. At this point, Entitled Mom has her face in her phone, so I finally get a chance to ask her assistance in getting the item I had back at the correct shelf. Entitled Mom decided that this would be the perfect time to exact some sort of revenge on me for getting mouthy with her, and she attempted to trip me. I managed to not fall, but I was definitely very angry about this. Something I have left out of this story is the fact that I'm disabled, and very obviously so. I have knee braces on both knees, ankle braces, elbow braces, and wrist braces, although I don't always wear all my braces at all times. I do wear the majority of them and walk with a noticeable limp. After Entitled Mom started screaming at both Walmart worker and myself again, I turned around to see about the funniest thing ever. Entitled Kid was jumping up and down on at least one box of hair coloring and the mix was everywhere. Security escorted Entitled Mom and Entitled Kid out of the store. She was only given a 90-day ban and had to pay for the cost of the hair color. It was one of the more expensive ones as well. She refused to pay when she left. I heard the security desk telling her that even after the 90 days, if she didn't pay, her ban wouldn't be lifted. So she's probably still banned to this day simply because of her attitude. 
When I returned to that Walmart about one month later, they had rearranged the shelves of hair coloring, with least expensive closer to the bottom and the most expensive at the top. And our final story of the day. I quit my job to move out of state to take care of my grandmother. Send my mother packing. So, I've been watching a lot of these videos on YouTube about entitled parents, malicious compliance, etc. Mr. Reddit is definitely my favorite. Oh, thank you, Durable. So I decided to post one of my own. I'm sorry about my English. It's my first language. I'm just an idiot. Plus, I'm doing this on mobile. Sorry if it's long. Cast. We've got me. We've got my mom. Entitled and secretly evil. And grandmother. Nana. It's short enough. Let's begin. My entitled mom was heading to a state up north, close to the west coast. Let's just say it's the potato state. To get away from an abusive relationship and drugs because she's pregnant. Big problem where we lived. I decided to join her because I heard that my Nana fell down the stairs to the basement and couldn't get to a phone to call for help. Roughly 12 steps. No one was around to check on her for three days. She didn't live alone technically, but my cousin who claims to still live here never stopped by until I showed up. And my aunt is kind of just fixated on her new relationship and lives with her new boyfriend now. Anyway... When we showed up, my Nana had no idea we were showing up. Big surprise and a lot of fighting with my aunt to let us stay there till we found a place to live. She actually was pretty understanding and generous with letting us stay there because my entitled mom is more than just a black sheep in my family. Only reason was because my aunt really loves and respects me. Not two days of us being there, my entitled mom starts yelling at my Nana and accusing her of stealing her clothes calling her by her first name, which really rubs me the wrong way because of how disrespectful that is, and I know it feels like a thousand daggers in my Nana's heart, was just constantly going through all the drawers in the house and even broke the sink because she wanted to fix the plug thing on it. Just a lot of tweaker actions. At this point, my Nana and I both know Entitled Mom is still using and is starting to get more and more violent and disrespectful. I finally had enough and packed all her stuff up that was in the living room and threw it in her car. I go into Nana's room where the evil side finally comes out. I'm the firstborn and have always stuck by my entitled mom's side. Mama's boy, of course. You've disrespected and hurt Nana for the last time, and you need to leave. I have already packed up your stuff in the living room in the car, and if you need help with everything here, I have no problems helping you, because I love you but you can't stay here anymore. I go and start to grab some of her clothes on the ground. Don't touch my stuff. She starts punching me in the face and pounding on my chest like a three-year-old throwing a temper tantrum. Mom! Mom! I'm stunned at this point and just pushed her back. What is wrong with you? I'm your son. How dare you call for Nana after everything you've done to her? You have no right to bring her into this. You're out of here. I make two more trips into the room, grabbing more of her stuff, tossing it into her car, enduring her punching me before she locks the door. If you're not out of here in 20 minutes, I will remove you. Clock's ticking. My Nana says, Please don't do this. It's not worth it. No, you don't deserve any of the treatment she's given you. I came here for you, not her. Me yelling back to the room. 15 minutes. Go away, son. I'm outraged at this point. Don't you dare call me that after what you just did. No mother would treat their son like this. You aren't my mother anymore. All I see is a strange monster locked in a room like a darn coward because you don't know how to act like a decent human being. To wrap up what feels like a long story that was pretty much summarized, she packed up the rest of her stuff, put it in her car, and decided to wait until I came back from a walk. She tried to say something, but I just cut her off and said you have hurt me more now than any other time of my life. I walked inside and for the first time in years, bawled my eyes out into a pillow so no one could hear me. I haven't talked to her since. I don't really plan to, and it's actually been quite peaceful for the last month or so. Thanks for kind of letting me vent and listening to my story, even if I don't feel better having written it.
Entitled Mom Tries to Get in My VIP Pool Party Without Pain Hey, Mr. Reddit, I've been watching for a year now, and I finally have my own Entitled Mom story. This just happened, by the time I post this, two days ago. My family has an annual pool party at our city's baseball stadium. We planned this event for months in advance and sent out info for people to join our party. Of course, people who do want to go have to pay to get in. So we set in our plans, money, and surprises. The day comes and the party starts off good. Kids are playing in the pool while the adults mingle near the bar. A few hours pass and in comes entitled mom with her entire family. It was her, her husband, her three boys, one of their girlfriends, and her two girls. Entitled mom used to be close to my mom, but cut ties with her family after the wedding incident. That's another story for another day. They walk in and I stop them. This is the conversation that follows. Entitled mom, what are you doing here? I'm here for the party. Really? Do you have $320 to get in? It was $40 per person. It paid for everything at the party. Um, no. Besides, I'm already here. Go on, kids. Go play. The kids didn't move. I was close friends with them, and they knew not to mess with me or my family. Well, go on. They know that they can't because they weren't paid for. Now either pay or leave, please. No. In fact... Go get your mother. She'll let me in. In case you don't remember, my mom doesn't want to talk to you. Unless you want to apologize for the wedding incident. Entitled mom just scoffs and tries to walk past me to my mom. Now here's a surprise. My mom was going to tell everyone she was pregnant. To make this make sense, I'm 16, so stress and anger isn't good for her. I blocked her path. My mom and dad noticed and my dad walked over. Hey, sweetheart, what's the problem here? Mrs. Entitled Mom doesn't want to pay to get in or leave. Hey, Entitled Mom's husband, do you think you can talk to your lady? This is a paid party. Sure thing, bro. Come on, honey, let's go. The kids had already walked out of the party. Entitled Mom was getting red in the face. I glanced at the bartender, who was radioing security. I'm getting into this party one way or another. Now, let me in. She did that sarcastic clap when she talked. If you want to get in, pay $320. No, get out of my way, you brat. She tried to slap me, and I caught her hand. Her husband was standing with her kids, and my dad was prepared to help me when things got dirty. He knew I could handle myself, but he liked to fight alongside with me. <coughs> Entitled mom tried to punch me, and I ducked. I still had her other hand. I twisted it and turned her around. I pinned her to the ground and I saw security coming. My dad traded spots with me and I talked to the security guards. A few minutes later, the cops arrived. My dad got off of Entitled Mom so the cops could take her. As he does so, she springs up and tries to come for me again. I dodge with ease. A cop tries to cuff her and she slaps him. Later, she got arrested. They asked if we wanted to press charges and my mom said yes. I just asked for a restraining order. The party went well and our surprises were taken greatly. Hopefully the next entitled mom I meet doesn't want to fight me. Next we've got... Try to pull malicious compliance on me? Enjoy the backfire. Hi all. Recent lurker and first time posting, so go easy on me. Also, not a native English speaker. I wanted for some time to post this story, however, I've been told by my wife that people might not believe me. I hope it's not too long-winded. Our cast. We've got me. We've got my girlfriend at the time and future wife-to-be. We've got the bank manager, and we've got the bank manager in another branch. It happened almost 20 years ago. I was a newcomer to London, UK. Met my girlfriend. Opened a small business which didn't last and closed in less than half a year. My girlfriend and I rented and moved in together in a house. At this point, the direct debit for the rent of the house was set up on my personal bank account. 
This was quite inconvenient as I had to manage personal finances, business finances, and shared expenses for the house. So the girlfriend and I decided it was time we open a shared bank account. As it happened, our individual bank accounts were with the same ABC XYZ bank. We thought opening a joint shared account would be a piece of cake, right? Wrong. One day towards the end of the month, girlfriend, also self-employed, found time in her busy schedule and we pop into my bank's branch in the afternoon. There's barely anyone in the bank. I go to the cashier and explain the purpose of our visit. I'm told to wait and someone will be with us shortly. Enter Bank Manager. Hi, pleasure to meet you. I am Bank Manager. I've been told you would like to open a joint account, but I don't see you having an appointment. Sorry about this. We, girlfriend and I, were not aware we needed one. Is it possible to do it today? It doesn't look like it's very busy here. Bank Manager looks at me with a condescending smirk. This is not how this works, I'm afraid. We are actually very busy in the back offices, which you don't get to see from here. You need an appointment. How about tomorrow? Me, after consulting girlfriend. Uh, great. Is it possible to do it sometime after lunch then? I only open my business in the morning, and it's the most convenient time for girlfriend and I, because she is also very busy in the morning. As soon as I say this, I catch a malicious glint in his eye. I'm afraid not. You see... Those matters can only be taken care of in the morning. Can you do 9.30 a.m.? It's the only slot I have. Otherwise, we might have to reschedule you for another day. It will still have to be in the morning, though. Now this is a bummer, for the above-mentioned reasons. Girlfriend and I need to get this sorted out, and as much as this smells like BS, we decide not to press the issue. I've learned a long time ago not to upset the people who serve me. Tomorrow it is, 9.15 a.m., girlfriend and I are lined up waiting for our appointment. We bring all documentation we've been asked, bank statements, photo ID, proof of address, utility bills, etc. Bank manager greets us with a smile and invites us into a small meeting room. I note the table even has small microphones pointing in the direction of each party, presumably to record meetings. This is not an uncommon setup in institutions, so I ignore it. I make a mental note that the LED on the microphone is not on. Bank manager notes how well we are prepared, asks for our bank cards, and starts going over the documentation. He looks up our account details on his laptop and tells us he will not be able to open a joint account for us. In fact, he says, opening a bank account for us will be impossible. I ask why? And here he starts feeding us BS with a voice which as much as it's condescending is also polite and sounds almost logical. Almost. You see, Mr. OP, a short while ago, ABC Bank merged with XYZ Bank, and so we became ABC XYZ Bank. For the general public, we are ABC XYZ Bank, but internally, ABC and XYZ are still very much separate entities. You see... When you opened your account with us, you in fact opened it in a former XYZ branch. Your girlfriend, however, is an actual ABC client. I hope it is clear to you that under those circumstances, ABC XYZ Bank will never be able to open a joint account for both of you. This cannot be right. You guys are ABC XYZ Bank, for all intents and purposes. All documentation we have is labeled ABC XYZ Bank. You are advertised as ABC XYZ Bank. People know you as ABC XYZ Bank. You are ABC XYZ Bank. Therefore, you should be able to open a joint account for us. I watch him carefully. I see he doesn't like my tone or the fact that I called his BS. Well, you might be able to open a joint account if, for example... Your girlfriend closes her bank account and reopens a new one with us in our branch. Or vice versa in your case. The point is, you cannot have a joint account with the current setup. The rest of the conversation went in circles, while he, with his most condescending tone, explained the same thing over and over several times as if he was talking to children. We go back and forth and we get the same answers. 
This is where I say something that will come to bite me in the butt later. My words verbatim. Well, this will not work for us. If we cannot find a solution, I will have to take my business somewhere else. He looks at us with a weird smile on his face. I can't exactly place it. There's something sinister in it. He bids us good day and we exit the branch. Girlfriend and I sit on the benches outside for a cigarette and coffee to discuss our options. She mentions that two streets down, there is another, smaller ABC XYZ branch. We could go there and ask. We go in and it's crammed full with people. We waited our turn, explained again why we are there, and other bank manager comes to the window. Now, please bear in mind that this is a very small branch. They don't have meeting rooms like in my branch. The conversation I have with other bank manager is heard by pretty much all bank staff and majority of pensioners who are there to cash off their pension checks. Hi, we want to open a joint account. We are both ABC XYZ clients. We went to the large branch down the street and we were told this is impossible since I am an XYZ client and my girlfriend is an ABC. Can you help us please? I'm sorry? What? I repeat myself. She stares at me and asks me to give her more details. As I start explaining, she calls a supervisor to listen in on the conversation. Their eyes widen in disbelief the more I progress with my tale. I can see them both barely managing to contain their laughter and yet with professional faces, they patiently wait for me to finish. Who told you this? The bank manager in my branch. Are you serious? Yeah or at least the bank manager in my branch was. The laughter that followed shocked me. There were tears on other bank managers' eyes and on quite a few other people too. For a moment, I even thought to myself that they were laughing at me for being an idiot who doesn't understand the internal workings of the bank. I get nervous and I feel a shade of humiliation coming over me. After what felt like forever, other bank manager composed herself. She apologized and said this was the biggest BS she's ever heard in her career. She explains that what we've been told is not technically true, at least to the point where it can affect the customers. Apparently, ABC, XYZ are still reconciling a few things internally, but opening a joint account is not an issue and offers her help. We accept. She explains that my girlfriend will be the lead name on the account since she was the original ABC client. That, she assures me, in no way will affect us. 20 years later, this is still not an issue. Other bank manager opens the new joint account for us and gives us the details written up on bank stationery. Before she sends us on our merry way, she apologizes for the troglodyte bank manager is. She also gives me information on the internal escalation procedure should I decide to raise the issue as a complaint. I said I will think on it. We are happy. We have a new joint bank account. I realized that in the process of opening it, we completely forgot to move the direct debit for the house rent to the new joint account. Never mind. I decide I will do so next time I go to the bank to pay the bills. I might as well rub it in bank manager's face if I see him. Two days later, we received the joint account checkbooks in the post. Excellent. A day later, the cards. Brilliant. A day or so after we get the pins for ATM withdrawals as well as the welcome letter. Magnificent. Everything is in place now. I am just about to forget the incident with bank manager when a couple of days later a letter tumbles down through the letter box. It is for me alone. I open it and I read something to the following effect. Dear Mr. OP, following our appointment on this date, as per your request, your current account with ABC XYZ is now closed. We regret to lose you as a customer, blah blah blah. Please find enclosed a check for the remaining amount that was left on your account. Sincerely yours, Bank Manager. What? I blink rapidly at the letter and reread it several times. It still reads the same. This guy closed my account. This means the rent for the house will go unpaid. My mobile phone bill too. The inconvenience exceeded the fingers and toes I could count on. My fury knows no bounds. 
The next day, I don't open for business again. First thing in the morning, I am in front of the bank with the letter he sent me and asked to see him. He popped out of the back offices. Ah, oh, Mr. O.P., I've been told you wanted to see me, but since you are no longer banking with us, I will not be able to attend to you, since we are only serving actual clients of the bank. For your information, I am a customer. I slap on the desk the checkbook and the card of my joint account. What in the world possessed you to close my current personal account? Maybe we should move this conversation to the meeting rooms, he says after noticing other clients listening in on our conversation. He disappears for a minute and later directs me to one of the meeting rooms at the back. I sit down and I notice the red LED on the microphone is on. Recording us, are we? Good to know. So, how can I help? He says with a crap-eating grin. You closed my bank account. Why? I show him the letter. You asked me to. Don't you remember? During our last meeting? I did nothing of the sort. Yes, you did. You said you were taking your business somewhere else. How could you not remember? Oh, I remember all right. What I remember word for word from our conversation is me telling you, if we cannot find a solution, I will have to take my business somewhere else. In what world does that mean, please close my account? Another crab-eating grin. Well, Mr. O.P., I can see English is not your first language. When you make a statement like this in UK or other English-speaking country for that matter, that means you no longer wish to use the services of the other party. So, I obliged. Maliciously compliant jerk. Just now did I realize what that first look on the first meeting was. Me gearing up and raising voice. Did the big if escape your notice in the beginning of my sentence? And even if it did, you cannot close my account without following procedure. This is one of the oldest banks in the UK. Surely you have such procedures and you don't rely on the vague interpretations of non-English speakers. I know you have procedures in place for this. Every bank has them. I had an account in another UK bank before I joined ABC XYZ. I closed it before I switched over to ABC XYZ. So, I know you would also have something similar. You need my explicit and signed request to close my account. But you said, I am not done, I shout. A security guard pops his head in the corridor and looks in our direction and asks me to keep it down. Bank manager stands up and walks towards him, waving him off with his hands. He turns around and is about to sit down again. His gaze flickers to the red LED of the microphone on the table. One minute, Mr. OP, he tries to say. Don't you dare turn this recording off. We will need it for what may happen next, depending on how this conversation goes. He tries to interject, but I cut him off. Do not interrupt me, please. This is your escalation procedure. I will be following it to the letter to make a complaint against you. I pull out the notes I have from other bank manager how to escalate this and I show him. His eyes widen. He is starting to sweat. You will reinstate my account immediately. The direct debit for this house rent is due in two days. The direct debit for my mobile phone is due the day after. My account better be active by then. If not, you better have your evidence in place for when I escalate this. But sir, the account can no longer be recovered. Oh, really? Just like I couldn't open a joint account? I don't believe for a second you know what you're saying. It turns out I can have a joint account and the evidence is in front of you. You will reopen my account with all the bells and whistles that were attached to it, like direct debits, etc. You will also transfer this direct debit from my personal account to my joint account. Then I expect you to get back to me and let me know how you are planning to make up for the mess you put me in. Bank manager is sweating bullets at this point. My last sentence triggers something in his demeanor and he suddenly relaxes a bit in his chair. That same smile I couldn't place on the last meeting with him crops up on his face again. How much do you think would be an appropriate compensation for your trouble? I get that weird feeling again. He is up to something. I examine him. 
The sweat on his brow is still there, but he is kind of leaning forward, closer to the recording microphone on the table. My brain jumps up a gear. I lean to the microphone on the table and choose my words carefully. Mr. Bank Manager, for the record, I am not here to bully you nor the bank for money. If I am to understand you correctly, it sounds like you are suggesting monetary compensation. If this is the case, I am open to your suggestions or any other ideas you might have. All right then, how much do you think is an appropriate compensation? He looks worried again. Again, I am not here to extort you or the bank. I will not put myself on the record by demanding X amount. It is you who has suggested this twice now. I am willing to consider your offer and possibly accept it if it's reasonable. I put on the table my business bank account card. This is my business bank account, which is also with ABC XYZ. Have a look at my daily deposits from my business. You will note on average, I deposit around 500 pounds every day. Your nonsense has costed me two days of business. This is over 1,000 pounds in turnover. Please tell me what you think is an appropriate compensation for my loss. Bank manager, visibly sweating again, starts mumbling. Well, given that this is turnover and not actual profits, I could offer you like 500 pounds compensation. But like I said, this account can no longer be recovered. Me cutting him off. 500 pounds sounds very acceptable to me. Do you want me to sign something acknowledging this? No? I guess we still have the recording from this conversation to get back to. And please, do not start again with the nonsense of my account being lost. This is your mess, and I expect you to fix it. We exchange a few more words. He kept asking me to be reasonable, as if I was not. I kept insisting that this is for him to sort out. I left him my mobile number and asked him to get back to me by the end of the business day. I left him there, standing dumbfounded with his oversized gray suit. Just as I'm about to walk out of the bank, I see other bank manager entering the branch. She recognizes me. Oh, hi. Thanks for all your help with the joint account you opened for us. No problem. It was my pleasure. Are you here to escalate your complaint? No. For your information, our two branches are merging, and I'll be taking over this one. If you decide to escalate, please come and see me. Funny you should say that. Bank manager closed my personal current account. We've been having a shouting match until now. I might be escalating more than you know. He what? Closed your account? Why? When? What? Listen, you've been lovely and very helpful to us. I will have to get back to you on this. I've lost way too much time with bank manager already and need to get my deliveries for tomorrow organized. Pointing to bank manager, who still looks at me from the back, I say, Why don't you ask him for the details? Or better yet, listen to the recording from my meeting with him. See you soon. I walked out. I see her eyes narrowing as she looks towards bank manager. I really have no time for this. I go about my chores and get a call at 4pm. It's bank manager and his voice is audibly strained. Hello, Mr. O.P., this is Bank Manager. You'll be pleased to know that we have reinstated your current account with us. We also credited the agreed compensation of £500. You will also receive a replacement bank card in the post in the next few days. I thank him. Knowing that this is truly over now, I can afford to relax. I update my girlfriend and she is shocked. I give it no more thought. Everything is well and over and I am 500 pounds better off. I don't escalate this further, mostly because my sinking business is demanding a lot of my time. I note that the house rent direct debit was also transferred to the joint account. So, the idiot did something correctly at the end. Nice touch. The aftermath. A month passes. All is well. It is time to pay the house bills again. Being busy with the business, I choose the last possible day to pay the bills. I do that online now but back then I had to go to the bank. So there I am, in my favorite branch of ABC XYZ Bank, waiting on the line, counting the money while juggling with the paper gyro credit slips for each bill. I am at the front of the line when the recorded announcer chimes in. 
Cashier number six, please. Number six is the furthest from me. I make my way and put all the money in the gyro credits under the window. I look up and surprise. Oh, uh, hi, Mr. OP. He is flabbergasted and stares at me. Well, hello, bank manager. How are you? Seeing that he is now manning the cashier desk, I make a point to address him by first name only. All good, thanks. All is well, all is well. He starts to fumble with the money while counting them. One of the gyro slips gets jammed in the computer. He tries again while sweating like a pig. Another cashier arrives with a let me do it attitude while he stands behind her looking over her shoulder. Before she is done, however, he makes a hasty exit without so much as an eye contact. If I must guess, he got demoted to a cashier. How I wish I was there to see it happen. On my way out of the bank, I see other bank manager talking to a client. She notices me and gives me a small smile and a nod. I smile and nod too. All is well indeed. Found out my friend is 100% an entitled parent last weekend. Worst weekend of my life. Last weekend, my friends and I decided to go camping for a break. There were seven of us planning to go, and three of them had kids and were keen for a break. A few hours before we were set to head off on Friday, one of my friends says she is unable to find someone to look after her nine-year-old son and says she's bringing him. We weren't particularly keen on that, but we felt bad saying she couldn't come, so we just let her bring him. To avoid everyone bringing a car, we just take two and agree that whoever is in each car will split petrol costs. She brings her own car with just her and her son. This becomes relevant later. We had never met her son, but we learned very quickly he is spoiled, and quite frankly, a nightmare to be around because she lets him do whatever he wants. From here on, I'll refer to her as entitled parent and him as spoiled kid and give a few examples of the crab she pulled. He eats, almost exclusively, cereal, chips, and chicken nuggets. He has a tantrum if you even offer anything outside of that, so we learned quickly not to try to get a real meal in him. We spent a day at the lake. She had his chips and nuggets ready, but he decides he wants cereal for lunch. She wanted us to all leave, because we obviously didn't bring milk to the lake. Entitled parent demands one of us to go get milk for her boy, and when we say no, spoiled kid starts screaming, and then she yells over him, Look what you've done to my baby boy! When she sees we are still not getting milk for her, she runs to her car and drives off, leaving us with spoiled kid, who is still screaming. She's gone for over an hour, and comes back with milk and says, Sorry, I needed a break from your negative attitudes. He picks up on those vibes, and that's why he's been screaming. She then demands we split the cost of her petrol for going out to get milk, saying, If you lot hadn't had been so stubborn and cruel to me and spoiled kid, then I wouldn't have had to drive all that way. We all just said no and got into our cars. I have mental health issues, which I take medication for, morning and night. Spoiled kid wanted to play with them because they are different colors and shapes, and I had brought them in my weekly packs, so they were all separated, and I guess he thought they were candy or toys. I don't know. I explained to him that they were dangerous, not candy, and that it was important medicine. Because I didn't trust him not to try to grab them, I moved them from my bag to the car. That night, I go to grab my meds and I can't find them. I ask around, and everyone says Entitled Parent had been in the car last, so I go to ask her if she had moved or had seen them. Her and her son are on a mat, and I am horrified to see him playing with all of my pills. I rush over and take them all, asking her what the heck he is doing, to which she just says, He wanted to play with them. He knows not to eat them. I take them all and tell her there is something wrong with her if she thinks letting her kid play with medication is no big deal. When he starts screaming that he wants them back, she tries to pull them off me 
and starts yelling that I am evil and trying to be mean to her son. I am bigger than her, so I just push her off me, and they're both on the mat screaming while I thank God that was our last night there, so I didn't have to suffer much longer. We had agreed to stay at a campsite in our tents. We had two tents, big enough for all of us, and all figured it was cheap as heck to just share tents and cook food over a little gas stove. Entitled Parent decided to get a little unit because they come with a small oven, and Spoiled Kid only likes frozen nuggets, oven-baked, not pan-fried. We told her that was a lot of money just to bake his nuggets, and she said it's fine. Then, at the end of our weekend, she tried adding her unit to the costs we were splitting. We were baffled. None of us had spent any time in the unit or used the facilities it had, so we didn't understand why she would think that it should be split. We refused, and she lost it at reception, saying we should have known she'd need units for me and my baby. We refused to pay and walked out while she cried at reception until they told her to pay or they had called the police. And on top of it all, she emailed us an invoice with the money we owed her because we had split the costs of food, petrol, and accommodation. She had decided that her costs too should be split and split the costs of her son's food, the unit she stayed in, the petrol she had used, and a fee that she claimed would show we were remorseful for the way you treated my boy this weekend. He is a miracle and should be treated as such. I emailed her back and told her I wouldn't be paying a cent and that as far as I'm concerned, our friendship is over. The others said something similar. She posted a status saying she is glad she cut ties with a group of child haters. I used to be confused as to how she was single as she is quite beautiful and, I thought, lovely. I thought her baby daddy was insane for leaving her. Now I know he was saving himself. Next we've got, I see why your husband left you. Apparently, I have a story. I think this won't be too long, I hope. I was talking last night with coworkers about dumb things we did as kids and brought up those little colored flags that we stuck in the ground that we all snagged a couple of and waved around like mad. At least in the US. I don't know if there's anything similar to the flags elsewhere. Reminded me of something that happened a while ago. These little colored flags are markers for underground wires and pipes. Various colors for various things like water pipes, gas lines, electrical wires, and all that fun, dangerous stuff. And they are essentially so diggers have an idea where to and where not to dig so they don't hit dangerous stuff and, you know, seriously hurt themselves. I didn't know this until I was in high school. So, a friend, her mother, her four-year-old daughter, and I were walking around her apartment complex a while ago. Her daughter had just had her birthday, but I was busy and couldn't come to the party but I made time to deliver my gift in person a few days after and to play with a little goober because I love her. Amy, Barb, and Rose, respectively. All fake names, of course. Amy's husband, Juan, was in the hospital at this time because he, the day of his daughter's birthday, started having pains and, yay, gallbladder attack with a side of annoying complications. But Amy's mom... She's very much an entitled grandma. Barb always tries to go around Amy to do things for Rose and spoil her for absolutely no reason. But she does this behind Amy's back and then goes and tells Rose, Mama doesn't want to do this for you, so I have to. Or some BS like that. It's definitely put a strain on their relationship. Barb is a snowbird. In Florida one half the year, and back in Indiana for the other half. This happened in April, so it was getting time for her to go back to Indiana. So, like I said, we're all walking around her complex. Rose going nuts about the ducks. She loves birds. Amy and I catching up, because we hadn't seen each other in several months at that point. Barb was just kind of sulking in the back. She invited herself over that day, and Amy wasn't very happy that she just barged. 
They don't have a fantastic relationship if you can't tell. So, I'm telling Amy about some entertaining drama going on at work. She used to work with me. When Rose runs up with one of those flags in her hand. Mama, Aunt Grace, look what I found. Oh honey, you shouldn't be playing with those, I said, and Rose kind of deflated. Why? They're pretty. I know they are, but they need to stay where you found these, Amy said. At that point, I could feel Barb walking up on us. Can you show me where you found it? I asked, and she nodded, grabbing my hand and pulling me three feet away from a tree. Sure enough, there are many of those little flags. I kneel in front of her. Do you know why those flags are there? She shook her head. You know how when you go to the beach, you dig in the sand to make a sandcastle, right? And you're digging and digging? When you hit a sharp shell that would hurt you if it was in your hand and not your little shovel? Well, that's kind of what these flags are for. When they dig here, they might dig and hit something that will hurt them, even with their shovel. These little flags let them know where something is that could hurt them. So if you take one and move it away, they might not know where they can get hurt. Rose looked absolutely flabbergasted and then got sad. I don't want anyone to get hurt, she said, and I pulled her into a hug. I know, and that's why I'm telling you this now. I didn't know about it until I was almost out of school. She sniffles a little and nods, and we walk back. But Barb walks up on me, and I nearly walk into her. Don't you tell my daughter how to parent, she seethed at me. I didn't. I just stare at her, telling Rose to go back to Amy, who was within earshot anyway. You're making my daughter look like a bad mom. How dare you tell Rose she could hurt someone? Those stupid flags don't mean anything. I almost said something calm and reasonable back, but then it struck me, and I had an idea. Your ex-husband did construction, didn't he? Amy's dad? So what? She snapped. That doesn't have anything to do with anything. Guess she didn't care about his safety, if you think those flags don't mean anything. I see why he left you. I see Amy stifle a laugh with her hand over Barb's shoulder. I guess it had been a while since anyone called her out because she was shocked. Barb stormed off back to Amy's apartment and was gone by the time we walked back. I enjoyed the rest of the day playing with Rose, playing dress up, and drinking wine with Amy that evening after Rose went to bed. Juan's back and recovered now if anyone's wondering, and Amy and Barb have been on minimum communication since, because Barb hasn't apologized for coming at me. Honestly, I don't care. Seeing her face made it absolutely worth it. She and her dad still talk on the phone every other day. The story about how her parents split up is also a decent story for this sub, but I don't want to post it without her permission. I'll see if I can ask, though. Next we've got... Entitled Mom's Kid Claims My Bike Light Blinded Him Entitled Mom Threatens to Call the Police English is my first language. I'm on mobile, so sorry for any weird formatting. Context. So, I live by a few bike trails, and I enjoy taking evening bike rides in the summer while the weather is cool. I usually leave around 8 to 9 and head back around 10 to 11-ish, depending on the trail I take. I always make sure I have my reflective tape on my bike as well, as a front and rear light. My front light is a bit brighter than my rear light, but not enough to blind anyone. Cast. We've got Entitled Mom. We've got Dramatic Kid. And me, your nighttime cyclist. On to the story. So one night I was biking home on one of those trails. I was about 20 minutes away from my house, and it was later, around 1040. So I cut off the trail and went along some subdivision streets. As I was biking, I saw a short figure walking with a taller figure. Only one side of the street was lit, so I wasn't able to see much other than just dark moving blobs until they came into the light of my front bike light. These figures turned out to be our dramatic kid and entitled mom. As soon as the kid came into the light of my bike, he started to yell. Ah! Mommy, I can't see! What the? 
You, put that light out. Me, slowing my bike and tilting my light down. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't think it was that bright. My apologies. Excuse me? What do you mean you didn't think it would be bright? It's a light. Now you have hurt my child's eye. Why do you even have a light? I'm sorry it hurt his eyes. I need the light so I can see, and so others can see me. Plus, it's the law that cyclists must have lights on after dark. Nighttime is for the dark. Just bike during the day. Then you won't need to blind innocent children. Mummy, it hurts! The dramatic kid then closes his eyes and starts to stumble walk around like a drunken zombie. He started to stumble towards me and my bike, and I tried to back out of the way, but he was too fast and caught his toe on the wheel of my bike and fell. I tried to catch him, but that proved difficult as I was still holding up my bike. The entitled mom shrieked and ran to her son, like five steps, and scooped him up. How dare you! First you blind my son, then you trip him? Is this what you do for fun? I'm reporting you to the police for harassment and disturbing the peace. Ma'am, I'm sorry, but your kid did that to himself. It's getting way too late to be out, and I'm going home with my light on. Goodbye. I got on my bike and biked off, hearing her yell after me. Turn off your light, you jerk! I don't know if she didn't call the police or not, but either way, I'm still continuing to bike with my light on at night and have never gotten a complaint. So, confused emoji. And our final story of the day. Entitled People, Cheerful Employee 1, Entitled Assistant Manager 0. Long time listener here. This may fit tales from retail, but it not being about a customer, I'll put it here. Cast, we've got the employee, which is me. We've got Entitled Assistant Manager, which is the jerk. And we've got the store manager, Mrs. S. I worked at a store in Florida that started with initials. I loved the job and the interaction with the retired, somewhat well-off people who bought slightly imperfect things at a way lower price. I had worked in several departments before being permanently put in jewelry. I worked at the counter and kept the handbag section clean when there were no customers. For the first year there, things were great. The store manager and assistants under her were the best to work for. Only one got snappy when stressed, but we all knew she meant well. Then came the entitled jerk of an assistant manager. He had been transferred down from Chicago and hated the heat. I myself was from Wisconsin and loved the warm winters, but apparently he would rather freeze his butt off in January Whatever, cranky jerk. He never smiled, and I mean never. Not even on his birthday. His greeting was a growl, and he hated helping anyone if it meant leaving the office. No one liked him, and we all wished he'd get transferred back up north, which he did after I left. He did not like me. I knew it from the start and tried to avoid him. He yelled at me for having a bottle of water in a cart of things I was taking back to another department and didn't care that I was pregnant and needed to drink plenty of water per my doctor. He didn't notice the chocolate bunny head in the cart next to the water, so he wasn't the sharpest tack in the box. His entitlement hit the fan one night in July. It was hot. Several people had called out, and he was earning the nickname Jack Donkey very quickly. I was eight months pregnant and doing my usual watch the counter while cleaning up the purses, and it looked okay to other managers. To him, it wasn't good enough. I wasn't moving fast enough for him, and he decided to yell at me right after the doors were locked after closing. He wanted to be out in 30 minutes, and I needed to hurry. The bags on the floor wouldn't pick themselves up, and I should have started cleaning much earlier in the shift. Crap like that. I sat on the floor trying to ignore him and clean, and he then asked me what I had to say for myself. I almost told him where to go, how to get there, how to greet the devil, and how long to stay. Instead, I cried, hard, sobbing, everyone could hear me. 
He walked away in silence as if he had won. The next day I opened, I went straight to the store manager, Mrs. S, and told her everything that had gone on that night, with me, the other employees, all of it. She was shocked. I was a level-headed person, so this incident was so unlike me that she knew it wasn't the hormones talking. She called him in and the following conversation took place. Jerk, what happened last night? Three people called out. This store was busy and I was trying to keep everything together. I had to run two departments and my manager duties. I know how stressful that is, but it happens sometimes. Why did you yell at employee? She didn't have her section cleaned up on time and was not moving as fast as she should have been. We all wanted to leave. I say, the service desk still had things to be put back and the registers were being emptied. We were not even close to being done. I was so far beyond done at this point. So, you yelled at her? What was that going to accomplish? She's pregnant, so she can't move as fast as you can. She is a good worker and does her best. What is your problem with her? I was under a lot of stress last night. And? She's too cheerful. Yes, he really said that. So, you don't like her because she's too cheerful? Get over it. You both work here and she gets along fine with everyone else. Figure out how to get along with her and apologize to her for last night. It was uncalled for and will not happen again. We both left the office and I kid you not, he did not speak to me for two weeks unless the store manager was around. He would not make eye contact either. He never yelled like that again, and when I went on maternity leave to have my daughter, the store manager did everything she could to convince me not to quit and stay home to take care of my baby. I didn't go back because hubby and I had decided I would stay home, but I loved and still love going back to that store every time we visit my in-laws. Feel free to post this in a video. I have an entitled parent story to share later that would benefit from your many voices as well. And shout outs to our re-generals of the day, Sergeant Mason, Theo, and Anne Swan. Become tomorrow's re-generals by leaving as many re's as you can in the comments below.